Hello and welcome back to another video. This one is going to be a little bit different to the race analyses that I normally do. This will be a Bathurst 1000 race predictions video. Because as we all know, the Bathurst 1000, the legendary race, the most famous race on the V8 Supercars calendar, is coming up on the 7th of October in only a week's time, or less than a week, depending on when you watch this, hopefully before the race. So, let's have a look at a few of the things. Let's look at the cars, let's look at the drivers, let's make a few guesses as to who's going to win, where they're going to come, that sort of thing. And before we do any of that, we need to look at the track itself. So let's have a look at the Mount Panorama circuit. Of course, we start on main straight or pitch straight. A short straight uh, compared to two of the other main straightaways around the circuit, but it is home of much action up until turn one, which is Hell Corner. Always, always chaos at the start of the race around Hell Corner. We're lucky to see anyone, everyone get through there unscathed. When then they make the dash up Mountain Straight over the rolling hills up into turn two and Griffin's Bend. Again, another hot spot. Um, this being a place to watch in particular since when drivers get their brake pads changed, they've got cold tires, they've got cold brakes. This is the first corner that they have to brake for uh, because pitch straight exits after turn one. So often drivers go straight into the wall at Griffin's Bend. It's taken out many a driver around there. So that is definitely one to watch for. Up into the turns three and four of the cutting an incredible two set of turns. Always exciting to watch them go through there on the first lap. This is where we get up to the part of the circuit where not much overtaking ever happens or very rarely happens around here. Starting with turn three, we come around to Quarry Corner for turns five and six up around Reed Park for seven, eight, nine, and ten. And by the time we've hit turn ten, we're on top of the mountain at McPhillamy Park, the highest point of the circuit, 174 meters above main straight at its lowest point. The elevation change in this track is incredible. Up and around to Brock Skyline, as renamed recently in uh, in honor of the great Peter Brock, the all-time highest Mount of Bathurst wins for any driver. And after we come over Skyline, we start to head back down the mountain through the S's, 11, 12, and 13, and into the Dipper, which, as it sounds, is just a huge dip in the road. For 14 and 15, we come along turns 16 and 17 before we hit Forest Elbow at 18. Another place to watch. Many overtaking moves are started coming out of turn 17 and breaking late into Forest Elbow. And some people are getting very, very ambitious and bidding it into the wall on the exit of Forest Elbow. Happens every race. There's always accidents up at Forest Elbow. Turn 19 is a small kink after Forest Elbow before they head down the incredibly long and fast Conrod Strait back down the mountain. We're hitting maximum rev limiter coming down Conrod Strait over 300 kilometers an hour depending on the car's individual setup before we hit the turn 20 kink coming up to the braking zone for the chase. This is another place to watch. Conrod Strait is obviously a great place for overtaking. Getting a good run out of Forest Elbow is key. Drafting all the way down Conrod Strait is also important. And then coming out from behind a car just after the turn 20 kink and taking a place down the inside of the chase for turns 21 and 22. Many people overcook it and go straight into the sound the sand, go straight into the sand trap, sorry, on the exit of the chase and that's where they stay we've seen many people exit their race from that position after the chase turns 21 and 22 we come around to murray's corner the last corner of the circuit which has a short straightaway before it again more overtaking happens here and that brings us back to the main straight with of course the pit entry being located before murray's corner on a set of tight chicanes with many people many many people um clipping the curbing damaging their car or even overcooking it uh, and hitting one of the tire barriers and lots of people speeding on entry happened a lot last year i believe um to it happened to a lot of people last year i think from memory 
So, as I mentioned before, the lowest point to the highest point is 174 meters, which is huge. The longest straight is Conrod Strait at 1.916 kilometers, nearly two kilometers long by itself, with Mountain Strait being another 1.1 kilometers long. So, altogether, your full throttle for at least three kilometers across this circuit. Which brings me to the total length of the circuit, which is 6.2 kilometers in total. It is a long circuit with the record lap time being a low two minutes, about two minutes and two seconds for a qualifying top 10 shootout record time. It's a long circuit. It's a long race, 161 laps, 1,000 kilometers. Always, always, always delivers on the action. So before we go any further, let's check out some few facts about the race. The most safety car periods in a Bathurst 1000 is 13 in the 2000 race, and the most laps affected by the safety car is 48 of 161 in 2006. Always safety car. Always at least one. This is always usually helped by the weather. If there's rain, you're guaranteed chaos, guaranteed some unusual strategies. It always happens. The record for the most cars in the lead lap by the end is 19 in 2010, 2011, 2012, and 2013. Surprisingly, not as many people get overtaken as you would expect, or at least uh, the front runners don't fly away with it as much as you would think, considering how long the race is. Um... Yeah, always safety cars to look out for. Always interesting to see what will happen. Safety cars, of course, always shaking up the strategy, changing things up for the people. Uh, before we move on to looking at the drivers, let's have a look at the weather. So, we will look at the start. So, of course, before we look at weather, we've got to look at when the events are. So, practice one is on Thursday at 9.35 a.m. with practice two for co-drivers. Also on Thursday at 12.55. Practice 3 at 3.05 p.m. on Thursday. With practice 4 the following day for co-drivers only on Friday at 8.30. Practice 5 at 11.15 for main drivers. Followed by Armourall qualifying for Friday at 3.50 p.m. So qualifying is two days before the race, which is unusual. Only Bathurst is like that. Practice 6... The next day on Saturday at 10 a.m. followed by the Armour All Top 10 shootout at 5.10 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. Sunday, day of the race, warm-up at 8.05 a.m. followed by the race at 11.10 a.m. So, let's have a look at the weather. The qualifying, the ones we're interested in for weather, Friday... Saturday for top 10 shootout, Sunday for race. So, Friday at 5 o'clock, sorry, Friday at 3 o'clock is when we're having our qualifying session. And according to the weather, Friday, 16 degrees, a top of 16 degrees, a wind speed of 23 kilometers an hour, and 70% chance of rain. So, we could very well be in for a wet qualifying session, which will be interesting because on Saturday, there is a 10% chance of rain. And that is, of course, when the top 10 shootout is. So we're going to see some very interesting strategies considering that qualifying might rain and the top 10 shootout might not. So for the top 10 shootout, 19 degrees maximum, precipitation of 10%, wind of 16 kilometers an hour, which is mirrored for the Sunday race, which has a precipitation of 20 percent so we could very well have a dry race or we could have a bit of a wet race this will be very interesting for people who run different setups in qualifying a qualifying setup that's fast in the rain may not necessarily be fast in the dry it'll be very interesting to see how it happens however the temperatures are mostly uniform 20 degrees on Sunday, 19 degrees on Saturday, 16 degrees on Friday. We shouldn't see any shocks to tire wear because of that. Wind 
uh, speed of 16 kilometers an hour, which again is very similar. We might see some tailwind down Conrod, or we might not. The speed isn't very fast, so it shouldn't make too much of a difference. But we may see some interesting tire strategies and setups for the Friday wet qualifying session, if, of course, it is wet. And let's cross our fingers and hope it is. As for the predictions, who do I think will win this race? Well... I hate to disappoint all you Ford fans, you Scott McLaughlin fans out there, of which I myself am definitely one, but I don't think McLaughlin has a chance to win this race. If He'll be lucky to even finish ahead of Shane Van Gisbergen with the form that his car has been in lately. After seeing Sandown, I'm not at all confident that DJR have a strong enough car to even remotely challenge Triple Eight in the endurance races. The amount of wing that they needed to take out of Scott McLaughlin's car to keep it competitive in a straight line with Triple Eight was worrying. And Bathurst is a tight and technical track up the top and a fast track down the bottom. You need to be good at both in order to succeed. And the way that Scott McLaughlin's car is set up, it looks like that they'll be okay in a straight line, but slow around the top. This is, of course, the optimal way to be. You want to be, ideally, slow down the bottom. Uh, Sorry, you want to be fast down the bottom and slow up the top because it's where all the overtaking happens is down the bottom of the track. So even if you're slow up the top, No one can get around you anyway because there's hardly any opportunities to overtake up that part of the circuit anyway. I don't think he has a strong enough car to fend off people coming down the bottom of the track. He's got way too little downforce to be a threat around the top of the circuit, especially in qualifying. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him finish Not finish, but qualify rather far down the order compared to where we're used to seeing him this season. So my money to win the race is Jamie Winkup and Paul Dumbrell. They've just been in way too good form. They obliterated everybody at Sandown. They've been driving excellently together. They clearly know each other very well at this point. And I think they will definitely have the best chance to win that doesn't mean they will win of course this is the great race and anything can happen as has been proven to us time and time again but i think they have the best chance of winning as for my ones to watch though i want to put my one to watch on scott pie i think he looked really strong at sandown surprisingly so and he might just surprise us all if he gets into the top 10 shootout and sets a good lap I think that both him and James, Co- I think both him and James Courtney, sorry, have the ability and the car pace to put on a good performance around Bathurst. So I think that they, and in particular Scott Pye, are the ones to watch for the Bathurst One Thousand. Well, that's all from me. Those are my predictions and who to watch. Let me know who you think will win the race down below in the comments. Let me know if I was wrong. Because, of course I am. <laughs> Tell me how I did. And we'll, we'll, we will see when the race comes up. Until then, though, less than a week away. Let's get excited. Bathurst is a great time. I will see you post-race to ch- chat about what happened. But until then, I will see you next time.